and welcome back to Epic Arms. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Tika T1X. So the Tika T1X is really a versatile little rifle. It's got everything you're going to be looking for if you want a little hunting rifle, but also it's going to be pretty amazing for Rimfire PRS. You know, while in its basic configuration, you know, it doesn't really scream anything special, but once you chassis this baby up, this could be the ultimate Rimfire PRS rifle. And that's actually what you're going to be looking at later. So I'm going to complete the review on it in its basic form, but ultimately this is going to go in an MDT XRS chassis. So retailing $820 Canadian or $650 US, it's not a budget rifle, and it's also not a super premium rifle like a Anschutz or one of those type of things. You can get it in the 22 long rifle or 17 HMR. Let's start with the barrel. So the barrel is a 20 inch cold hammer forged, one and 16 inch twist threaded at the muzzle for either a muzzle brake, tuner brake, or a suppressor. The question we all wanna know is just how accurate this rifle is. So let's get started. Starting with the worst, working our way to the best is the Remington Ely Club. So just so you guys know, this is all at 50 yards and these are 10 shot groups. So the average for the Remington Ely Club is 1.86 inches, the best being 1.1. Next is the Lapua Center X, the average being 1.30 and the best being 0.62. So there's the reason why I do three different groups of 10 is because of this. So we're gonna get one that's incredible and two others that are really just awful. So. If you're in a, on a stage and you're not doing the 0.62 group, you're doing the 1.68 group, that could be the difference between you know placing and not placing at all. Next is the CCI standard velocity, the fan favorite, average being 1.19, and we only did technically two groups of 10, the best being 0.90. Not bad for that, but generally not that amazing. Next is the RWS, the average being 1.0, and well, the best being 0.92. Next, SK Rifle Match, the average being 0.96 and the best being 0.78. So we're, we're starting to get decent enough to, you know, to bring to a match at this point. Next, the Biathlon Sport 0.93 is the average and 0.70 is our best. Next, Ely Force, the average being 0.92 and the best being 0.74. SK Standard Plus, the average being 0.87, and the best being 0.71. So this is really pretty darn good. This is what I would bring to a competition if I didn't have a better group than this. The SK Long Range Match. So the average being 0.76, and the best being 0.61. So these were all below 0.9 inches at 50 yards. So that is incredible. These are some really, really good groups. This rifle really impressed me in terms of accuracy. That's this is what you're gonna want in a match. You know what, I wanna say this is probably, possibly more accurate than my CZ457. That's pretty damn good. So it's accurate, but how did we do it? Well, for one thing, obviously you're gonna need a scope. So if you guys are looking for a good quality scope, typically I recommend getting something in the 25 power if you really wanna test just how accurate your rifle is, just because lower magnification such as 12 and 15, it's a little bit harder to, to really, um, hold on a really fine point on paper. So I'd recommend getting a 25 power scope. And if you're in the market for a new scope for a Rimfire PRS, I'd recommend the Discovery ED PRS. I'd recommend it so much that I actually decided to carry it on my website, cdnprecision.com. So whether you're in Canada or the US, if you're looking for a good scope and you wanna support the channel, you can go ahead and purchase one on the website at cdnprecision.com. Also, the scope has 32 mils of internal adjustment, 10 mils per revolution, a zero stop, a wide magnification range, and ED glass. So it has everything you're gonna need for Rimfire PRS. Now, in addition to this, I figured, you know, why don't we put this rifle to the test in some kind of little barricade scenario in a really, really windy day at 
230 yards. Now I know what you're thinking. What am I thinking going out on a windy day to do some long range shooting? Well, just like on match days, you don't get to control the weather. The only people that can control the weather are the government. So let's see if we can make some hits out at 200 meters. Hit it. It only took like four shots, but There we go. There we go. Now, I hope you're able to see those last ones because they were all impacts. Now, on top of that, I figured, what's a good rimfire review without doing some extreme long range rimfire? Now, I know, I know, I did change up the stock for this portion. We have it in the MDT XRS chassis. Now, this isn't your basic MDT XRS chassis. This one has the upgrade. So this is like the MDT XRS Elite. So this has the enclosed fore end. So it gives you an arc rail on the bottom. So you can technically shoot off bipods. So that just makes it so much more convenient. You could do a lot more with it. And you have extra M locks on the top. In addition to that, it has the vertical adjustment butt pad. So normally having the vertical adjustment on a chassis is something you see on $1,000 chassis. This one you can kind of do the upgrades as you see fit. So it's really awesome. Oh, and also for the extreme long range that uh, you guys are going to see in just a moment, we added a 40 MOA Picatinny base, while for the 50 yard groups we were just using a 20. I wasn't going to upgrade the base unless this rifle showed itself to be very capable. Anyway, let's go do some extreme long range rim. <laughs> So as you probably know, there are more misses than hits on that plate of steel. <laughs> and it's pretty darn challenging. So just so you guys know, 40 MOA base, 32 mils of internal adjustment in this scope. I was maxed out on the amount of elevation and I was also holding eight mils in the reticle. So it really goes to show that I'm using as much as this setup is possibly capable of. So yeah, 500 yards is extreme for rimfires, but it is possible. You just need to get your dope right and have a little bit of luck on your side and use the right ammunition. Unfortunately, I ran out of the good stuff, so I was just using CCI standard velocity. I know, that's just my excuse. <laughs> so next, let's talk about the actions. The T1X has an incredible 45 degree bolt throw. That's ridiculous. I have never heard of an action with so little of a bolt throw, which is gonna make it really nice and quick to cycle the action. Um, for example, the CZ457 only has a 60 degree bolt throw, which 60 degrees in itself is pretty darn good, but 45, a little bit better in my opinion. And in another video, we're gonna be doing a comparison between the Tika T1X and the CZ457. Now, the action is pretty smooth. I would say, let's say this one compared to the CZ457 from the factory, this one is probably a little bit smoother and a little bit quicker to operate. Next, let's talk about the trigger. So this trigger is just like the Tika T3X triggers. It's super crisp. It breaks between 1.5 and 5 pounds with about a 0.1 pound variance. So it's really, really consistent. Why Tika doesn't decide to make aftermarket triggers for other rifles is kind of beyond me because they have the quality on par with many aftermarket, you know, triggers. So they're doing an amazing job and there's no creep whatsoever in this trigger. Next, let's talk about the stock. So the stock is very basic, as you can see here. I do have some complaints. So if you look at this grip, 
there's that little cutout here on the side, it is interchangeable. Now, the one that comes with this is not this one. This one's slightly fatter. I was doing the groups at 50 yards with the original one, and my wrist was sore after all of those groups. I decided to swap it out for the um, the other Tika fatter grip that comes with the Tika T3X varmints, and also you can buy it in basically Cabela's or any store. So if you wanted to make it a bit more ergonomic, if you have a large size hand, this is what I'd recommend for you to get. And also it's a bit more vertical, so it's a bit more comfortable for shooting. So we have sling swivel studs on the front and back, obviously. It takes 10 round detachable magazines, and I've found them to be quite reliable, and they seem to not quite fall freely. So if I was in a match, Personally, I'd prefer something that falls freely, while this one, it tends to like just catch it, just like that. But overall, they work quite reliably. Now, while we're talking about magazines, if you are buying this rifle to, you know, to turn it into a rimfire precision rifle, you might want to consider checking out NDR shooting supplies for their 15 round magazines. Because as we know, in some matches, you need more than 10 rounds. And a 15 round magazine really is going to set you ahead. So these are full metal magazines and they are serviceable. So that's really what I like about this. They have Allen keys around on the ends here and you could just unclamp it and clean it out. If for example, you get dirt in it and it's not working properly. So that's a really awesome thing. So if you're looking for a good quality magazine for matches that it takes 15 rounds, check out NDR shooting supplies and they also make them for the CZ457. Next, let's talk about aftermarket support. So in terms of stocks, there's a lot you can do for this. Most companies are making good quality stocks for the Tika T1X. For example, there's the MDT XRS, and obviously with all the elite updates you can do to your XRS, but then again, you can do them down the road. You don't have to do them all right away. So over the years, as you want to upgrade your rifle, you can upgrade the forend, and you can upgrade the vertical adjustment butt pad on the back. Also, you can add front weights into the uh, chassis on the front if it's not perfectly balanced for you. Now, personally, in this configuration with the XRS, I felt just with that it was probably the perfect weight for me. Additionally, there's the Oryx chassis, there's the KRG Bravo, there's the GRS Bifrost, there's the Boyd stocks, there's lots of stocks available on the market for you. Now, in terms of triggers, it doesn't appear that anybody's making the aftermarket triggers just because Tika does a pretty damn good job right off the bat. But I think people are making aftermarket trigger springs for the Tika T1X. Also for barrels, there are companies making aftermarket barrels for this, such as IBI Barrels, Proof Research, Lothar, and many others. Lastly, the warranty. So Tika rifles have a two-year warranty. The rifles are inspected according to the rules of international organization CIP. The products are guaranteed against possible defects in material or workmanship. In case of defect, please send the gun together with a guarantee card to your local Tika dealer or importer. So a two-year warranty is pretty darn good. Um, I don't think you're really going to need it. Most of the time you're going to see issues arise probably in the first month or two, you know, in your first 10 visits to the range. That's typically where you start to see issues. If you don't see an issue, then you probably will never really see an issue after that. Then again, I've probably owned about six Tika rifles and I've never needed to contact, you know, my dealer for any type of issue whatsoever. They just function so reliably and consistently. So yeah, this rifle is going to be my next Rimfire PRS rifle. Not in this configuration, obviously, because it just leaves a little bit to be desired. It's good, it would be a great hunting rifle in this configuration. But for a match, I want the best. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe. I also have a playlist for comparable for other options if you guys want for Rimfire PRS or just for target shooting. So thanks for watching, Epic Arms.